All right, in this video, I'm going to go over my CQBR Block 1 clone. So you may look at this and think it's a Mark 18 Mod 0 clone, because you've probably seen rifles that are labeled as Mark 18 Mod 0 floating around. Um, and this looks just like that rifle, so what's the difference? Well, the primary difference is how the gun was issued, or what form it was issued in. So the CQBR Block 1, like I've built here, was just an upper receiver that was issued as an accessory for the M4A1. So that's the big difference is a CQBR Block 1 is a 10.3 inch barreled upper on an M4 profile lower. Now the Mark 18 Mod Zero is its own weapon system. It's an entire gun. So in the same way that Crane issued originally the SPR upper receiver and then later outfitted those with uh, M16A1 lowers to, to create the Mark 12, a complete weapon system. They took the CQBR Block 1 and paired it with an M16A1 surplus lower to create the Mark 18 Mod Zero. So that's the big difference, is mainly the lower receiver and some slight differences in the accessories that were used in them. Um, but basically, these two guns, unless you really look at the lower and figure out what profile is, are pretty indiscernible. So uh, these guns have a pretty recognizable silhouette. Uh, they've been used in different movies like American Sniper. They've been used in different video games. If you're like me and you search the internet for, you know, different guns being used in the global war on terror, this is a common tool of the trade in SOCOM's toolkit. Um, it's pretty handy to have a 10.3 inch rifle that you can either run without a suppressor and have a very compact and easily maneuverable weapon system that's still capable out to four to 500 yards. And then you throw a suppressor on it and you have something that is the same, virtually the same length as a standard 14 and a half inch, you know, M4 or M4A1, but you now have a suppressed weapon. So uh, there's a reason that these were pretty commonly seen in the global war on terror. And they still are in the form of the, um, Mark 18 Mod 1, or the CQBR Block 2, which is the proper name for it. So, uh, getting into the parts list for this gun, as I mentioned, it's a Colt M4 profile lower receiver. It has the Colt M4 carbine roll marks on the other side. Uh, I have a UID label from Carolina Laser Works on this one. Uh, if you were going to do a Mark 18 Mod Zero, you can get an A1 profile lower from a company like either PRI or Nodak Spud, or uh, the Brownells A1 lowers are made from Nodak blanks, so those are good quality too. Um, or you can start with an 80% lower and go for you know a very very accurate uh, lower receiver with you know your own engravings. So as of uh, the recording of this video that is still legal and hopefully it stays that way. But anyway, um, whichever receiver you decide to go with is going to dictate what pistol grip you're going to want to use. If you do the M4 profile lower, uh, you're going to want to use an A2 pistol grip like what I have here. If you do the Mark 18 Mod Zero lower, uh, you're going to want to run an A1 pistol grip. Um, and then the only other real difference on the lower is going to be if you do the Mark 18 Mod Zero, uh, you can get the engravings on the right side of the magwell that actually say Mark 18 Mod Zero, Crane, Indiana, with the little navy anchor on it. Uh, those are that's kind of a cool touch if you're doing um, an actual Mark 18. Um, if you're like me and you're just doing this on an M4 profile lower that you've already SBR, then you're pretty much done at this point uh, with the lower anyway. Uh, as far as stocks go, you would have seen primarily the SOP mod stock, the Gen 1, like I have here. Uh, you would have also seen the Colt carbine stocks. You would have seen Colt waffle stocks uh, and even some Magpul options, you know, on later renditions of the gun. So getting into the upper receiver, um, the upper itself is a C-stamped keyhole forged upper. Uh, that was one of a couple different uppers that would have been used on this gun. Um, the Optic is a Aimpoint Comp M2 with a 30 millimeter Wilcox mount, which is a lower one-third mount. Uh, that was also a uh, primary part used on the Mark 18 Mod Zero and the CQBR Block 1. Um, these also were seen with uh, ACOGs, like the TA-01, the original 4-power ACOG. Um, and 
EOTEX and later versions of Aimpoints and even some LCAN Spectre DRs later, but the uh, Aimpoint Comp M2 and the Wilcox mount is kind of the you know go-to for this kind of build. It gives it kind of that recognizable silhouette. Uh, the sights used on this gun would have been the LMT rear fixed sight, and then, or you can take an A2 uh, carry handle and cut it down to resemble the LMT. Uh, then the front sight post would be a Colt F marked front sight, just a standard triangle gas block. So uh, the F marked front sights uh, just designate that they're a certain height that was chosen by the military for their purposes. So. Um, not a huge deal if you don't have one, but um, if you want something that's as clone correct as possible, you're going to want to get an F-marked front sight. Um, the handguard on these guns was the Knight's Armament RAS. So um, there were also uh, RIS rails used. So it just depends on kind of what era of gun you're building, if you use a RIS or a RAS. I have a Vero Beach marked RAS on this gun because the RAS is the improved system. And mine's being a Vero Beach marked RAS, it's actually... Uh, more clone correct than what Knight's Armament is selling now, uh, just solely based on the markings. Um, since Knight's Armament moved to Titusville, Florida, a lot of guys kind of covet the Vero Beach marked stuff just because it's in limited supply. So, um, anyway, moving on, um, the barrel, like I said, is a Colt 10.3 inch um, government profile barrel with a 0 0.07 inch gas port. Uh, the reason the military went with that gas port size, uh, which is on the smaller side, is because they wanted the gun to run either suppressed or unsuppressed with military spec ammo, which usually is on the hotter side. So as long as you're using good hot ammo in these guns, you can run it suppressed or unsuppressed and have no worries about you know the reliability of the system and the longevity of it You know compared to any other platform. Of course, somewhere down the road, you're going to have to start replacing parts and these do have somewhat of an accelerated wear and tear compared to other platforms just because of their short dwell time and their faster cyclic rate. But uh, set up with the proper gas port and like an H2 buffer is what a lot of people go with. Uh, these do tend to last a really long time. So finally, uh, the suppressor for this gun. Now, later versions of the Mark 18 or the CEBR would have used a Surefire suppressor and those are getting to the point where they have almost as long of a military history as the Knight's Armament Suppressor seen here. But what I have here is the Knight's Armament QDSS NT4 Suppressor. So, uh, aside from cloning purposes, there's not a whole lot of reason to go out and buy one of these, unless you just think they look cool. But something like the Surefire is going to have identical or better performance. It's going to have a better lockup system. But it's kind of hard to beat the classic look of the Knight's Armament spread, um, NT4, or the Corn Cob, as some people call it. So if you're building a Mark 18 Mod Zero or a CQBR Block 1, that is really your only option for a suppressor. Um, that is clone correct, unfortunately. Now, there were some later versions of this gun. They were a transitional rifle as the Block 2 series of accessories were rolling out, where these older Block 1 rifles were still being issued, but with newer accessories, such as uh, the Insight like PEC 15s and WMX 200s and um, EOTEX LCANs and that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's feasible to think that maybe a Surefire Suppressor made its way onto some of those rifles as well. Um, I couldn't find a picture of one in, you know, my 10 minutes of research before filming this, but um, take that for what it's worth. So anyway, uh, I think I'm going to cut off the video there, but um, if you like this video, be sure to drop a like on it, ask me any questions you have down in the comments section. Uh, if you want to see how I painted this rifle, I actually just posted that video not too long ago, so go check that out. And thank you for watching.